Hello, welcome to another tunnelless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you today is called Light Through the Storm. It's a six by eight vertical, and um, did this back in September or so. So we're we're getting caught up now. I was going to foist one on, on you guys that was a like little three and a half by three and a half I did it's not a bad painting but it was missing the entire sky and I even started and I, uh, I, I didn't want to chip you so what I did was actually got the archive video of this done so that I could do the more bloggish version for you so hopefully you enjoy this painting and uh, you uh, appreciate the effort because we, we got to keep you happy. We want you to be happy. Um, let's see, talk about this painting a little bit. Well, now this is a scene that um, I, I, I basically captured the reference image maybe six or seven years ago. I've done several paintings from that image. For some reason, I find it inspiring. And so you're up on a hill kind of going down and you can see some uh, little hills in the distance and uh, now every time I painted it, it's probably been some sort of different sky. Although that may not be the case. I think it, one of the things about uh, when I set up reference for a sky is that uh, I could paint the same sky, you know, 20, 30 times over. It's going to look pretty different every time. Uh, it's just a byproduct of my approach and the fact uh, that, you know, unless I was doing another version of this painting the very next day, um, if I'm doing another version of the scene um, years in the uh, in years apart from the original, it's going to be very different. And so this is one reason I, I like to revisit scenes, and um, I follow my inspiration where it takes me. I have had uh, actually I'm trying to recall if I've ever had someone a little bothered about me repainting a scene of a painting that they bought, but uh, I don't know if. if if they have, I, I haven't heard about it, but what I would, I would say to that would be, it's a completely different painting, you know. The inspiration is not the painting, the painting is the painting. And uh, I don't spend a lot of time cleaving very tightly to my reference imagery anyway. I, I sure did early on. I tell you, it's taken me quite a few years to really, well, even after realizing that the painting is not the reference, um, you still have this inclination to put things in the reference into the painting that shouldn't be there. Um, there's a lot of things that will work at the level of photography that will not work in a painting. And unfortunately, um, I could list a bunch of those, but in fact, I talked the other week about um, like big trees in the middle of a scene. Unfortunately, <laughs> I was <laughs> talking about a different painting than the one I was uh, actually doing on the video. And so that was confusing to people and I apologize for that. I tried to be, you know, well, I, I, I do try to warn you, I, I tend to ramble, but uh, <laughs> it sucks if you're, you're, you're paying attention and go, what the heck is he on about? What's he talking about? There's no trees in the middle of this. <laughs> Anyway, um, I've done this as a square, I think, and I did it as a vertical as well, an 8x10, probably back in 2013. I think I still have that painting. I think I still like that painting. But, um, I don't know, I felt like doing a... I, something about the sky grabbed me this time, and I had just a different idea about how I wanted to approach it. And... Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at uh, some of my older work and seeing that I'm a lot more direct in my application of paint now. I used to be a little twirly-whirly, <laughs> for lack of a better word, you know, a little changing my, my brush uh, direction up and, you know, whatever. And it, it was always a genuine expression of where I was at, um, never contrived, but these days I pretty much just try to get the paint in the right spot <laughs> I don't worry too much about the strokes and I can tell you I've been doing some photo processing today to catch up for you guys and uh, um, 
when you when you zoom in on my stuff that's why i like to always put if you haven't seen the zoom ins uh make sure you, you check out these um anytime i put up a video there's going to be a corresponding blog post on my website so if you'd like to get a little better idea of what it would look like close up um you can always tip on over there and i do i do a, a sh uh, you know a good a good shot of the painting and then i do two zoom ins um and the last zoom in is at the 100 percent resolution of my photo so you get a pretty good sense of the strokes and the detail and the feeling and um <clears throat> You know, the way I was uh, sort of taught, um, actually I didn't have any one teacher, but I certainly picked this idea, idea from books and, and, and researching and learning I did is that for a painting to be successful, it needs to, it needs to be interesting from a distance. And then when you get closer to it, it also needs to have a payoff with the, um, the fracture of the brush strokes or in some, some people have a different style. It might be the details you know, or that are delineated by the brush strokes. And in my case, I don't really ever attempt to do a, a real tight level of detail. I tend to always kind of work with a certain uh, fractured approach that kind of is a interweaving of strokes that creates the illusion of detail. That to me is far more comfortable to look at. and. Um, I have known some artists that are very good that will delineate a lot of detail. The paintings still succeed at that distant level and then close up. So it is possible. I do think it's quite a bit more difficult and for me impossible. So anyway, um, the other thing about this uh, scene is sort of keyed off a of purple purple thing uh, a purple yellow thing so I have uh, various different strategies for my color approach like I'll do a purple yellow this is a purple yellow going into blue um, and there's a certain amount of reds undertones in there um, sometimes I do the purple yellow it might be very complimentary very purple and very yellow um, but actually I think the last painting I put up might be, might be like that, or it might have been the one before it was a um, five by ten and uh, of a uh, like rocky outcrop of a tree. You you remember it if you, if you follow my channel. That it was much stronger uh, purple um, yellow dynamic with no blues. Here I'm bringing in the blue, and also you can see I'm bringing in the green. So you can you can spread out the the range, so to speak. So you can be really close in on that complementary range. Everything's either yellow or purple, you know, with maybe some grays and reds, which would be a place with um, some intermediacy, or then you can branch out into blue and green, almost completing the color wheel. So, but still in a kind of slanted way um, I like to play with stuff like that. Uh, the one I was thinking of putting up today uh, was one of these blue ones I do. Um, a lot of times uh, it might just be a earth tone, yellow tone, dynamic, um, what have you. Um, I have been doing photo processing. I've been very good. And uh, the reason um, why is that's usually the, the greatest holdup on burning the the archive videos and uh, but I have photographed a bunch of past master stuff that I'm just itching to share as well as originals I've done that I've been itching to share and uh, um, I'm, I'm gonna get on it I'm on it I'm on it today I decided um, that I'm gonna make it a priority today to get several videos uh, archived in uh, that I can use to make these uh, these YouTube videos so um, what else is going on? I was thinking about, um, I was thinking I'd like to talk a little bit about the concept of mastery and one of the reasons why uh, music has had such an interest and focus for me in the last year is because I don't have the, um, I have just as much talent and ability with music as I do with visual art. I, I think I do. Um, however, I, what I don't have is mastery. And when the thing that they both have in common is like 
there's so many elements that have to go right for a painting to succeed and i i know i talked about this on a recent video you know composition color the scene itself um getting rid of getting rid of distracting elements having an overall um, approach to your color you know there's a million things that have to go right for for someone to look at that painting and go wow that's a good painting um same thing goes with any musical composition and you've got the composition you've got the arrangement you've got the sounds uh, you've got the beat the tempo um, the uh, atmospherics uh, and then when you bring in the vocal you have lyrics and um, then you have production and mixing is actually quite a lot more things I think even than than a painting and um, since I pretty much arrived at a pretty good level of uh, mastery with the painting I think I've um, kind of been focused on the music um, and uh, this last year with the music really achieved a much higher level of mastery than I ever have in the last 13 years so it's been very gratifying and fulfilling and um, it's a great compliment to the paintings is because the paintings for me um, with, with the painting I, I just have to have good reference set up and I sit down and I paint and it comes out good or it doesn't and the <laughs> same thing with the music too but like I said I've, I've been a professional artist I've been paid very well to sit there and do images that were going on products and being sold and uh, well I could even call myself a professional musician I have sold some albums and I have been paid to do mixing and mastering and things like that so whatever but it's not to the same degree at all and it probably never will be anyway what I want to say about mastery you know we've got maybe another minute here or so so thanks for bearing with me uh, the pursuit of mastery is really its own reward you know and it's rewarding because it doesn't come easily and it's very rewarding to be able to look back at your previous work that may have been really good and even praised by people but from a vantage of greater mastery you can say well I thought I knew something then but I really am just now starting to learn that this goes for painting big time it goes for the music as well it goes for mastering anything and if you have that as a part of your life you're a lucky person because people that don't have something to work at something to master something to develop they're just i don't know having a good time or being a spectator or enjoying their family all worthwhile you know things um but without without that that search for mastery i feel like the those of us that are going for that i feel that we are the lucky ones and that we are the, the true truly the luckiest human beings and um if you're lucky enough as I am to have time to work on the painting and, and also the music um, I'm so lucky I'm totally blessed and I'm very thankful anyway hey we're getting close to the end here thanks for joining me today thanks for listening to me ramble if you have any questions you can put them in the comments section or drop me an email really appreciate that the, the emails and the contacts and uh, I'll be back real soon with another video probably midweek next week so um, until I, I, I get that to you, please do me a favor and uh, take good care and stay out of trouble.